Hey everybody, recently one of you asked me, how much does it actually cost to start and run a blog? Almost all of the content on the web focuses on the beginner and on the low end of the cost spectrum. What I wanna do is actually break it down for you, whether you're a beginner, whether you're well past that stage, or whether you're to where you're building your blogging empire and have a whole team of people. And I wanna show you what it's probably actually going to cost for you. To do this video, I actually went through our books and broke it down for what it would cost and how much you could spend, but also how much you're probably likely to spend. So as I go through these numbers, I wanna invite you who are blogging to follow along and tell me, are there other costs that you think are missing? Or are there some of these costs that you say, totally unnecessary? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I'd love for the people watching this video, for all of you to be able to have a really realistic idea of what to expect as you build out your blog and your blogging business. If you're just getting started on a website or already have one, there are a handful of expenses that you just really need to plan to cover. The first one's obviously going to be web hosting. If you've got your own blog and you wanna make a business out of it, we strongly recommend you use WordPress and you do that self-hosted, you get a domain name. If you're gonna go that route, Overall, in the end, you're gonna have way more flexibility, way more capability on your site, and probably gonna save money overall versus doing some sort of other hosted platform. But for hosting, I mean, you can see the numbers right here. You can spend anywhere from about $5 a month, easily up to $100 a month. We spend more than that simply because we have a lot of sites, but the plan that we're on with our preferred web host um, for larger sites will allow up to 10 sites in that $100 a month range. So that's something you can plan on. If you wanna see our recommendations for hosting, um, I'll put a link to uh, a, a page on our website where we do have a lot of our recommended tools and I'll send you a link right over to the hosting so you can see all of our recommendations and why we choose them. The next is domains. Look, domain names, you can spend $0 in your first year to simply because like if you go with our recommendation for a beginner site, they're gonna give you your first year for free. And depending on which domain registrar you choose to go with, you know, GoDaddy, Namecheap, there's several others, um, even Google domains, the cost is gonna vary just a little bit. But you can easily spend about $25 a year per domain name. Now, the $25 doesn't just take into account the domain registration. I like to include domain privacy. Domain privacy is going to uh, basically take your name off the public viewing of the registration and the registrar is going to, to put it kind of in their name, at least from a public standpoint. And then if there's ever anything that needs to come back to you, it has to go through them first. That is literally going to save you thousands and thousands of spam emails and phone calls over the course of the next two decades if you just get domain privacy. I know it feels like an added expense right now, but I would absolutely do that. Next, we'll talk about themes here. A WordPress theme basically is just gonna make your website be styled in a certain way. There are thousands of themes available. There are tons and tons that are totally free. You're probably, as you build this into a business, going to wanna use a domain that's a bit more premium. It's going to give you a lot more features. Really, you never need to spend more than about 90 to $100 per year on a theme. And so it doesn't have to be a huge expense. But one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these expenses while I'm showing them on a monthly basis, are gonna be paid annually. And so you need to be prepared to pay all of that up front. And so it could cost you a few hundred dollars to get your website set up from the start, but your expenses over the course of the year will basically be zero until the next year. Now, another one, I put this on here as just a mandatory, even though technically it's not, and that is site backups. Most hosts are gonna offer a backup service for you. They might charge for it. Some of them, it's just included, it's totally free. But a third party backup, in my experience, is basically a necessity if you don't wanna risk losing all of your content. We've seen some issues where having that backup literally saved us years of work. And so I recommend for this Manage WP, um, I'll put a link in the description, it's not even an affiliate link in this case, uh, it's gonna cost like two bucks a month, I think about $1.99, and they're gonna give you daily backups. And in fact, Manage WP, all the other features, um, a lot of it just comes for free and they'll even do a free monthly backup. So really even your site backup can be free. And then the next one is logos. If you are going to turn this into, the, into a website that makes some money, you need something with some design. Now it can be totally free to get a logo if you're a designer, if you have those skills. A lot of us don't, I certainly don't. But if you wanna save some money, 
you go over to Vector Stock. I'll put a link also in the description. That one might be an affiliate link. Some of them are. But uh, Vector Stock is a place where you can go get stock vectors. And what you'll be able to do is find something there that you like, an icon of some kind. But then you're going to be able to take that and you can customize it further. If you have those skills, if you have like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and stuff, you can make an awesome logo based upon a really nice design that you get from Vector Stock for only about 20 to $30. But if you don't have any of those skills and those software products that are much more expensive than it would cost to get a professional logo, you're gonna wanna go check out 48 Hours Logo. That is also linked in the description and is an affiliate link. But 48 Hours Logo basically for about $130, you're going to be able to propose like, these are the things I want, here's some logos from around the web that I kinda like style-wise, design me some logos and you're gonna get people who will make designs for you and over the course of that process, you'll select which ones you like and in the end, you'll narrow it down to one logo that you totally like. It's gonna be completely customized uh, for you and for your website. And so it's a great way to go if you don't have any of those skills. It's also a one-time cost. I have it on here as a monthly expense of about 1075 if you take that logo for, and break it out over the course of one year. That's the beginner setup. Now, if we total all that up, really? Realistically, if you're at the beginner stage, just go with Bluehost. So I'm not even gonna factor in the $100 a month option. And so even if you want the high end of everything else, you wanna pay for the logo, you wanna pay uh, for, your, for your backups, you wanna pay for the best theme out there, even in the end, it's gonna cost you spread out over a year under $30 a month. It's not too bad to get started. Again, just remember, most of that is up front. So that's gonna be $350, $360. But on the low end, it's more like $60. All right, but now we are taking it to the next level. Now there's a bunch of these. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time going through each one line by line. But again, these are expenses that you should just plan on needing to cover. The first one is plugins. We don't use a ton of WordPress plugins, but sometimes there's functionality that you just need on your website. And those plugins range anywhere, and a lot of them are annually charged as well, but they're gonna range in cost anywhere from couple of dollars a month up to maybe even 15 to 20 to 30, 40, 50. Really, they can go all over the place depending on the types of plugins you're using. For most sites, plan on about $5 a month for this. And if you have a site that just uses a lot of neat features and want to pay for all that, about 35 bucks a month is about the most you could reasonably expect to need to pay to have your blogging business be successful. Now, what I'm omitting there are um, like membership website type plugins and stuff. There are some plugins that can cost substantially more, but usually those are tied to an info product or a membership. And we're actually gonna cover that a little bit later. The next one is images. This could be one of your biggest expenses. On the low end, if you can just take your own pictures to put in your blog posts, you're gonna, they're gonna be free. But it's not always feasible depending on the niche that you're in. And so you may wanna go with stock photos. Stock photos can cost like 10 bucks a piece if you just buy them based on credits. It's way too much. We like to use 123rf.com. They have a huge library of photos. Uh, and really, it's gonna cost you more like, actually less than a dollar, up to maybe $2 an image, depending upon what package that you use from them. So if you're writing like 20 to 30 articles a month, and you're using an average of maybe an, uh, one and a half photos, those photos are gonna end up costing you a little over a dollar, maybe a dollar and a half a piece with 123RF, but you're just gonna need to find the right size subscription for the amount of photos that you need, and then you just get as many as you need. Now, they do have an option for you to buy credits where you, based on the number of credits you buy, maybe it's only like, it's a dollar a credit. The problem is that it's not uncommon for a photo to cost nine or 10 credits, so even there, I would recommend absolutely going with the subscription side and getting all the photos you need. That way you bring that cost down to that one to $2 range. Now the next one is supplies for content. We strongly advocate doing original research, which means sometimes testing products. Uh, it, it can mean any number of things. So what I would do if you're, if you're really getting serious about this and wanting to earn a great income and be really successful with a blog is budgeting some money every single month for some supplies. Maybe it's products that you buy for testing purposes. Maybe it's just supplies to be able to run an experiment so you can gather really good data. Whatever it is, plan on saving some money. It could be $100 a month. You could, I mean, disguise the limit on how much you could end up needing to spend. Just do what makes the most sense for you and where you're at in the stage of your website. The next one I put down is tools and software. Um, there are some software that we just use all the time. We use Photoshop a lot. Um, we'll take some of the images that we have and we'll customize them a little bit. Um, we'll use Illustrator to customize a logo or a design or something like that. 
Um, for that, I would just go get like Adobe's um, photography pack because it's going to have Photoshop and um, Adobe Illustrator, uh, Lightroom. Um, I think those are all included in that. I think there's illustrators in it. Anyway, it's, ten, it's like 10 bucks a month. But you could find yourself at some point spending much more. You may decide that you want a tool like Ahrefs if you're doing advanced search analysis. We do talk about in Project 24 at what point we would start using that because it does have some really neat features. But again, at the price point of about $100 a month, it's not something that I would do from the very beginning simply because that's an expense you just don't need. I also included a line item here for education. You need to be learning stuff, right? Um, you might wanna just go sign up for an Audible account and just listen to audiobooks. This can also be free. You can listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos. Also included in that is like Project 24. If you're not yet a member, you should probably go check that out. If we can help you cut down the time it takes to earn an income, these expenses won't even be a big deal for you just a few months down the road. The next expense is an email list. An email list becomes really valuable if you ever actually plan to directly sell something on your website. They can work really well for affiliate marketing and stuff too, but the real value in an email list comes when you're actually going to sell a product. Part of the reason that you do need that kind of value is because they can get very expensive. You can spend hundreds of dollars a month on the high end for an email list. And so, you know, don't just generate a gigantic list for without having a plan for it but email marketing can be really valuable. So if you're ever gonna use it, start collecting email addresses as soon as possible. You can start out for free. Okay, speaking of selling products, we love info products where you take information and you sell it like as a course or something like that. Um, bundles of those kind of products, there were so much. I've actually got a video about it. You should probably go check out if that's of interest to you. Hosting for these projects though can be very, very expensive. On the low end, cost-wise, Podia, I'll link below, is a great service. You can put together your products, your bundles, you can have an affiliate program, you can do all sorts of things. And the price for that starts at only about $39 a month, which if you have an info product that sells for even just like $20, selling two of those covers its cost. You do need to make sure that you're able to sell at least enough to cover your cost. Now, the cost if you want to host it yourself on your website, maybe create a whole membership around it and stuff, you can be spending easily two to $300 per month um, when we talk about hosting all the video content, if you're doing a bunch of that, when we talk about um, you know, the membership access and having a WordPress plugin for that, there's a lot of things that can go into it and it starts to become very complicated. And then you know, if you start to build that up and you have a lot of members, it's easy to spend a thousand, even $2,000 a month just to host the content and have the tools to be able to have that membership site. So I would recommend when you're first getting started with info products, to stay on the lowest end of the cost as possible and avoid membership sites. They're great, but they're a lot of work and they can be a lot of money to host. So um, anyway, the $39 site is a great way to get started. All right, so there's a lot of things in there. You won't need all of them um, probably, uh, but there's actually more because as this becomes a business, there are going to be other costs associated with it. For example, um, you, you're probably going to have to start having some sort of professional services, legal, accounting, that kind of stuff. We pay an accountant because our business gets, is complex enough that it really merits having an accountant do that work for us. Uh, bookkeeping fees, just keeping your books as, as your business becomes a little bit more complicated. You can start out by doing it in the spreadsheet. I did that for years, but at some point it makes sense to start using some accounting software that's going to help you with that process. It's also going to make a lot of sense when you have an accountant because it makes it very easy to work with them back and forth. At this point, another thing that you're probably considering would be like a virtual assistant. This is somebody who you can hire who maybe works remotely, maybe works one to two hours a day for you, and they manage your email account and the customer support, anything like that. Um, and that way, only the important stuff actually gets to you. But the cost for having a virtual assistant now is just one more line item. And you can see kind of an approximation of what that's gonna run for you, um, again, based upon the experience that we've had. And then the next one is when you get to a point where you know what's working, you're really good at search analysis, but you can only do so much yourself, you wanna start outsourcing some content. Now, if you're wanting to bring on freelancers, keep in mind that you may be able to, to pay as little as two cents a word, depending upon their level of expertise and their skill as a writer, you might be paying more like 10 or 12 cents a word, uh, which becomes quite substantial in some situations. But keep in mind that saving on cost there 
is going to cause you to have additional management. You have to take care of those freelancers. You have to man, you know, you have to send them what articles you want. They um, they will submit the articles back to you. You got to pay them. There's just a lot of back and forth going on there. So the other way to go about it is to outsource to a content writing service. Now there are some services where you could get an article for maybe as cheap as about thirty dollars today. But those kind of articles in our experience require a heavy amount of editing on your part after the fact. And so oftentimes you don't end up saving that much time, especially because in order to get the kind of content you want back, you also have to provide them with a substantial amount of the information up front. By the time I'm done with that, I, I don't know why I outsourced it most of the time. On the other end of that spectrum is um, a service like our Content Warrior Writing Service that we own and built and developed where all the writers are trained and are writing according to our methods and our standards. Every single article is being edited. Most of the articles are containing um, a significant amount of, of independent research, actual original unique research that doesn't just copy other information that's available on the web. The articles are completely unique and completely original. That kind of content is what puts you on that top end of the spectrum. But that kind of content is going to require a substantially lower amount <laughs> It's going to require a lot less work from you. In, in most cases, those articles for us are articles that once they're written, we immediately can publish them on our websites with no additional work. So now you have it, a much more definitive guide to how much to expect to spend. If you're just getting started, it's really, really not very expensive. But just keep in mind that as your business scales, it's not only going to cost you $5 a month. It's going to cost you more, but the reward is still so worth it because as your expenses scale your revenue can scale much 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 more and so it doesn't bother me that it costs that much to run a website especially when you consider what it costs to run most any other business.